How's it going everyone? Of Keeper Sora here and in today's video we're going to be doing a beginner's guide to monk. So in this video we're going to be covering how to become a monk, unlock monk or pugilist. Uh, we're going to be having a brief overview of what monk exactly is, uh, where it fits in in Final Fantasy XIV. And we're going to be then looking at the weapon skills, talking about the uh, the brief sort of basic rotation and the form the forms that monk has as well as talking about the positional requirements for monk because many people seem to struggle with the forms and positional aspect of monk so uh, to become a monk uh, you can either start the game as a pugilist picking that as your starting class which will then start you in Uldar so you'll probably start here and the Pugilist Guild is here. So if you already pick Pugilist, then you don't need to worry about unlocking Pugilist. But if you didn't start as a monk, then you can come to Uldar. You can, you'll start right here at the main Aetherite, and you can simply just run over here to the Pugilist's Guild. So once you get to the Pugilist's Guild, you should be able to talk to the receptionists named Gagaruna. Talking to Gagaruna will allow you to become a monk. I mean, a pugilist, sorry. So, once you've become a pugilist, you can then talk to Hammond over here, and he'll get you started on class quests. Now, class quests are every five levels, up until level 30. So when you hit level 30 on pugilist, by the way, I would recommend always doing your class quests every five levels, as sometimes there's important skills behind them. So, for example, we get I mean, we get Fist of Earth on this one, but that's not too important. But we get Demolish here, which is important. And I guess that kind of seems like about it, really. I guess I thought there was more. I must have taken some out since uh, <laughs> since I was doing these. Anyway, when you've leveled up to level 30 as Pugilist, you can come back to the Pugilist Guild here. You can speak to Gagaruna, who will have a new quest for you. And this quest, once you complete it, she will reward you with the Soul of the Monk Job Stone, or Job Crystal, right here. And that will give you access to Monk. So, simply equip the Soul Crystal. You'll get a boost in all of your stats. You'll get higher HP, you'll get higher attack power. So it's always worth having your Soul Crystal on, especially as a DPS, because you want to do as much damage as possible. So, essentially... Come to Uldar, come to the Pugilist Guild, unlock Pugilist, do the class quests with Hammond over here, level it to 30, come back to Gagaruna here, and then you can become a monk. Once you're level 30 and you are a monk, every five levels you'll then get a quest from a guy named Eric, who is the monk quest giver. Anyway, since this is a beginner's guide, I'm somewhat uh, assuming that people watching this are completely new to monk, in which case some of this might seem a bit overwhelming, but stick with me. Or that you are currently leveling up to 80, but you kind of just want a refresher on the job as a whole, and you just kind of want to uh, get a get another perspective or another look at what exactly Monk entails, like maybe you've forgotten some stuff. So this is going to be a good refresher for old people coming back to uh, playing Monk and new people as well. So... What exactly is a monk? Well, a monk is primarily a martial arts close quarter combat job. It has very, very little ranged attack, with enlightenment being the only one, which is entirely situational. You would never use this as a ranged attack. So we can essentially say say that monk is primarily close quarter combat. So it's a high, it's a fast paced job. It has very high DPS, and it has somewhat low support but it does have support there is a big emphasis on positional requirements on monk like with most uh, melee jobs but with monk it's taken to the next level monk is still a combo job however because of the forms associated with it it's more of a it's more of a choice however the choices do have a pattern and so in the end it does become very rotational and predictable so let's go to a quick striking dummy so i can just show you guys exactly what i mean like every job in this game if you want to if you want to practice you can come to these dummies and just 
hit them. Practice your uh, rotations, your hitting positionals, and stuff like that. Um, stuff like that it transfers very well into uh, into end game content or just dungeons and whatnot. So let's start with the basic abilities. So I'm going to cover Boot Shine, Twin Snakes, True Strike, Dragon Kick, Snap Punch, and Demolish. I'm not going to talk about Six Sided Star yet, even though it's a weapon skill. It doesn't act. Or it doesn't take part in our basic rotation, nor does it, and it kind of affects the flow of the rotation. So six-sided star I'm not going to talk about until a later video, probably the intermediate video. So for now we're going to focus on these six abilities here, or weapon skills, sorry, and the AoE rotation, because I think it's important for everyone to understand how and when to AoE as well. But first things first, I think it's important to discuss the positionals. Positionals are extra, you get extra bonuses on your weapon skills if you are at the correct position at the time of activating the skill. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to use form shift here as a quick example because it activates every form at once. So I can hit the... Uh, bonus here on boot shine just to sort of show what I mean. So I can hit boot shine from the rear and get a crit. This open portion right here of the uh, enemy circle means it is the rear. Either side of these arrows represents the flank. So probably from about here to about here is the flank and then from this open part here to the other open part here is the rear. So primarily as a DPS, or a melee at least, with positionals, you kind of want to sit yourself here on this little, this open part and where the ring starts. So we can hit the rear position from here, and we can get the flank position from here. But that's the positional aspect, it's uh, relatively easy, just look at the, uh, the ring of the enemy you're fighting, and you can see exactly where the rear is, or the flank. Some enemies do have a completely closed off ring, and this arrow will not be here, it will be inside. If you are fighting an enemy with a completely closed off ring, that usually means that there's no positional requirements needed for that enemy, and you can um, essentially just hit the enemy from whatever angle you want to, and you'll still get the bonus for your positional. So that's the position aspect covered. So let's go over some of the uh, some of the more niche things about some of the uh, the skills. So on particularly on monk, what I see people doing is they will uh, stay in their position until the damage number comes up, and then they will try to move to the next position. You don't actually need to do that. What you can do is the game registers your position. So as soon as I hit Twin Snakes, my position is already registered in the game. So I can immediately start moving to my next positional area. So let's say I want to do Twin Snakes and then Demolish. Demolish is at the rear, Twin Snakes is at the front. What I can do is Twin Snakes here, come straight to the rear, and then move again. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do Twin Snakes. Wait for the damage and then move. So you can move straight away as soon as you've hit the button. You will still get your positional bonus for uh, doing that. So that's one thing that's very important. I do see a lot of monk players waiting before the move's gone off, before they start moving, but you don't need to do that. You can uh, you can move as soon as you've hit the, the weapon skill. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about the actual forms now. So monk has three forms. It has oppo oppo, it has raptor, and it has Kowal. Oppo Oppo is classed as Form 1, Raptor is classed as Form 2, Kowal is classed as Form 3. Naturally, we are given access to our Form 1 abilities from the get-go, so we can always already use Arm of the Destroyer, Boot Shine, and Dragon Kick. But because we are not in Form 1, we don't actually get the bonuses from them. So if I was to use Boot Shine right here, it's likely not going to crit. Yeah, it didn't crit. So it didn't crit because I wasn't in Oppo Oppo form. So if I go back through the rotation, come back to Oppo Oppo form right here, it will crit now. So that's one thing. There's three forms, Oppo Oppo, Raptor, and Kowal. 
each form gives you a usually gives you a access to three abilities or three skills rather so oppo oppo gives you access to arm of the destroyer boot shine and dragon kick raptor form gives you access to twin snakes true strike and four point fury and koal form gives you access to snap punch demolish and rock breaker so how does this kind of work essentially it means that we can progress through a linear rotation going through each form using a yes no sort of system so what's easiest to do is i'm assuming you have form shift because that will make everything so much easier but if not that is absolutely fine if you don't have form shift yet or you're just level 50 that's fine so naturally if we're not level 52 and we don't have access to form shift we will not be able to choose what form we start in or choose what ability or skill we use first so <clears throat> we'll likely start with boot shine dragon kick or arm of the destroyer if it's an aoe situation but we usually never start with this so dragon kick is actually a higher potency than boot shine if we don't have a form so we typically would probably start with dragon kick so we'd go with Dragon Kick. Now we have these two moves. They're typically in Raptor form. A single, we're going to cover single target and then we'll go over AoE situations because that will just make things so much more easier to explain. So we're in Raptor form. We have access to these two. So typically the yes no scenarios come in here. Twin Snakes here, if we look, gives a damage buff. And True Strike is just pure damage. So Twin Snakes is. 10% damage applies to everything you do. So naturally, if twi we don't have Twin Snakes, we want Twin Snakes. That leads us on to Coel form. So Snap Punch is exactly the same as True Strike, in that it does pure damage. But we have Demolish here, which gives a damage over time, or a dot. So the damage over times in this game, they do their potency every 3 seconds. They're on a server tick, so quickly look at demolish right here so uh, let's wait for it one tick so two and three there's another two and three okay so it ticks every three seconds for 18 seconds so if you want to know the max the total potency of demolish or any dot take its duration divide it by three and then multiply that number by the potency that's an easy way to figure out how, uh, how good it is. So I suppose I could probably do that on stream right now or on this recording. So it was 80 potency times that by six because it was 18 seconds, but obviously divided by three. So just the dot alone does 480 damage or potency rather. But then we naturally want to add the 80 or 110 depending on the position or so. That's a total of 590 potency. So Demolish is Monk's strongest move over the course of 18 seconds. So these, these are always worth having up. So what this would then look like is we would want to have our damage buff up. We would want to put our dot up. Now we have the yes no situation for Boot Shine and Dragon Kick. So Dragon Kick actually gives us a buff for 30 seconds called Leaden Fist. So if we look here at Boot Shine, we have a Leaden Fist potency. So by using Dragon Kick, we can get a buff that actually boosts our next Boot Shine's damage. So naturally, if we don't have this buff up, let's just use Dragon Kick so we can see what it looks like. There it is. Boot Shine will deal increased damage. So now we have our system. We can use Boot Shine now. It takes up the buff. I've already got Twin Snakes, so I can use True Strike. I've already got Demolish up, I can use Snap Punch. I don't have Leaden Fist, I want to use that. Twin Snakes is going to fall off, I'll use that. And typically you want to refresh your dot when it's got three or less seconds. You know how I mentioned about the um, dots ticking every three seconds? Well, refreshing it when there's three seconds or less just ensures that you're not missing any damage by letting it drop off. Obviously, if you're new, it's expected that you might drop it occasionally. I mean, I drop it every now and again too, but essentially what you want to be doing is being vigilant and making sure that they don't fall off. 
So that's our yes no situation for each form. So upper upper form. Do I have lead and fist buff? No. Okay, we'll use dragon kick. Yes, then use boot shine. Raptor form. Do I have twin stakes? Yes, then I want to use true strike. No. Or if it's about to run off before I can reapply it. That's the that's a key term, reapply. So if if you have like say I don't know, three seconds or four seconds or five seconds left on Twin Snakes. And you're coming up to your Twin Snakes, but it's on. But if you did another rotation, then it would probably fall off during that rotation. So usually with Twin Snakes, I think it currently it works out that there's about five seconds to refresh it. Or four seconds. So usually you alternate these two. You alternate these two attacks and you alternate these two attacks. So Dragon Kick is always followed by a boot shine in the next rotation. So you can kind of see how it works. And then we have the same system for Snap Punch and Demolish. Do I have the dot up? Yes. Okay, then I'll use Snap Punch. If not, or if Demolish has three seconds or less, then I'll use Demolish. Of course, from the right positionals. So the best way to sort of get better at Monk is literally coming to these dummies and just beating them up getting the muscle memory in your ingrained into you where the positionals are as well as um, your timings on your buffs and learning to alternate dragon kick and boot shine twin snakes and true strike and then every other i think you do two snap punches for every demolish so now if demolish is up and you use two snap punches like for your next coel forms and then you'd reapply demolish on the next go so that kind of covers the forms and the weapon skills. I think next we should go into a dungeon. I'll go into a dungeon and we can discuss the AoE stuff. So let's go in under size. I'll just do this solo. I don't really feel like waiting around for people to join. <clears throat> let's go into Dumma Castle because this is a good example of a nice AoE centric dungeon. Okay, so we're in our first dungeon. Well, we're getting back into doing dungeons. What's expected of me? How do I AoE? And why should I AoE? Well, AoE is just simply more damage than doing single target rotation. It will kill it, it will kill stuff faster. It will kill all the mobs together and faster. And essentially why it's important is because tanks and healers have a finite amount of cooldowns. A tank might live for you know have good survivability for a minute and then after that their cooldowns are completely spent up so now they spend the next minute getting absolutely railed on by the enemies and potentially could die so why is it good to aoe then well if we look at the potencies quickly 110 or 140 in the, in the uh form form bonus 140 but that extends twin snakes and just 150, so that's basically our, our big hit. But this is to every single enemy, so that's why it's better than just single targeting a group of enemies. Because this guild is 110 potency, which obviously isn't 200 or 370, but then we can multiply this by the, t the amount of enemies there are. So if there's three enemies, this is doing 330. So, so that is better than just using dragon kick or boot shine so essentially what we can do is we just do this we cycle through our aoe rotation commonly as a monk what you'll do is the tank will pull first and that will give us time to get our twin snakes buff up so that every aoe attack then afterwards is buffed by 10 percent because 10% on all these enemies is a lot of damage. So typically you'll either want a dragon kick or boot shine just while there's like one or two enemies. Or maybe arm of the destroyer. The first sort of pack if he's uh, if the tank's running through. And then you want to quickly put twin snakes up while you can. And then after that you want to go to your AoE. And then from there it's simply using arm of the destroyer. Four point fury because that will automatically extend twin snakes by 10 seconds if you hit an enemy with it and then rock breaker so to just demonstrate this quickly if i don't have twin snakes if i don't have the buff 
and I use this, it doesn't grant it to me. We already need it to uh, to take advantage of it. So, so that's one important factor. We want to already have a twin snakes. So that's the AOE uh, stuff, and I think we've covered the uh, the positionals and the single target well. The yes no sort of linearness of monk so i think that is probably going to work out and be good enough for this first video this is part of a three-part series that i'm going to do a intermediate series or an intermediate video after this and then an advanced video so the intermediate one is going to cover all of our cooldowns that we get whilst leveling just as a general rule of thumb, you always want to be in Fist of Fire as you are a damage dealer and more damage is where you shine, so you want to do more of that. Don't bother with this when you get this. But yeah, the intermediate video is going to cover over all of our cooldowns, the interactions that we have with our cooldowns, and uh, how some of them pair well together, and that's... Uh, what we're going to mainly focus on in our intermediate video. The advanced video is going to go over the job openers as well as what a full rotation looks like on a in a fight. So so that's what is planned for this series. Hopefully this beginner's video has helped you to hopefully understand monk a little bit more. But yeah, that is uh, that is Monk, everyone, for now. So hopefully this video has helped you guys. If it has, feel free to thumbs up the video and also feel free to follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash oathkeeper underscore Sora underscore 13 in Roman numerals. And I will see you guys then. I've played Monk for a very long time since A Realm Reborn. I've taken part in multiple endgame raids and strive to, uh, to the max damage that I can. So... Um, yeah, I have min-maxed Monk a lot, and I know quite a fair bit about it, so feel free to shoot me some questions if you're unsure on anything, and I'll try my best to help. Or, yeah, as I say, follow me on Twitch. Feel free to ask me questions there when I live stream. I usually try to stream three times a week, and I usually stream a lot of stuff on Monk. So, yeah. You guys take care, and I will see you guys soon. Peace.